the Evox Electric Railway in Brighton, England, one of the very first electric railways in the world, and I'm going to use it as a setting for what would happen if we could reach relativistic speeds. We're setting off at 10 a.m. Yeah. Time is now 11 a.m., even though for the passenger only 20 seconds has elapsed. Let's look at how this could be explained by special relativity, if it were practically possible. We start with an inertial frame, that's to say one that's not accelerating, and a light source. A light ray travels downwards from the light source a distance of h to the floor. And using the fact that the speed of light is equal to the distance travelled over the time, which we'll call t naught, we get that h is equal to c times t naught. But supposing that the inertial frame isn't stationary, but moves forwards a distance of d, then if the speed by which it's moving is v, the velocity would be d over t, and therefore the distance d would be vt. Now for an observer inside the inertial frame the light ray will still continue to travel straight down so the original equation holds. However for an observer outside of the frame the light ray will now travel at an angle and will travel a different distance L. The speed of light c is constant therefore we would have c equals L over t or L equals ct. Well, we've got a right angle triangle here, so we can apply Pythagoras theorem. L squared equals h squared plus b squared. Or, substituting in from the earlier equations, ct all squared equals ct naught all squared plus vt all squared. You notice that in order to avoid the contradiction between the speed of light being the same for L and for h, we have had to introduce two values of time, one for within the inertial frame and one for outside of it. The rest is fairly simple algebra. And we arrive at this formula, which relates the passage of time within the inertial frame to the passage of time for an observer.